we'll just skip it. But um, all right, it wasn't a story about crossing the line or anything, but it was a sure funny it was. story about why I became so open minded. <laughs> yeah. Should I just tell it? No, we might, you might as well. I mean, all right, all right. I'll just say this really like quick. That. So basically, I grew up um, um, homosexual. Yeah, there you go. I grew up in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, mostly very, very strict Catholic family. Um, but the thing was, uh, one reason why I was why, why I'm so like chill about all this is that I would I would uh, visit my aunt who lives in Sherman Oaks in the summers, and she was a famous uh, uh, person for doing makeup and um, uh, no jokes here, please, about this word facials on people. And she would make you know she was like a skincare specialist who had her own space in Beverly Hills, and it was right next to a giant salon. And so I'd go hang out with her all summer. She'd you know, but she'd have to kick me out of the room when her clients would the women would take their tops off to lay down and like be able to have more cream applied to them or whatever on their uh, skin and so I'd sit outside in the salon surrounded by all these uh, gay guys running the salon and uh, so you know I was sort of like the kid that hung out they were all sort of like my uncles every day for like every summer for years and I had a fun time hanging out with them nothing ever happened nobody pulled anything but I I became very accepting and thought it was hilarious and maybe that's how I fell in love with musicals and stuff like that Mm -hmm. all those stereotypes but when I when I moved to Chicago in uh, uh, after college to study in Second City, about a year in, or my first year, I was totally naive about so much about g- the gay world and and so much about big city life at all that I went looking for an apartment and uh, apartment service. And this old lady was running it. She's like, "So, I got this nice place. It's affordable. It's very attractive neighborhood, but it's kind of near Boys Town." And I swear to God, I had no idea that that meant anything. I thought I'd grown up watching a movie with Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney called Boys Town about a real uh, Catholic orphanage that a priest ran caring for boys called Boys Town. So I said, oh my God, not only would I not mind living here, I'd like to volunteer. And she gave me this look. That's like, so what? All right, well, here's the contract, and I signed get it. Get in line, honey. Yeah. yeah, so get this. So I move to this area, right? And the apartment was at um, 595 East Hawthorne Place. I'll never forget it. Oh, yeah, that's Boys Town. And, yeah, you know it? Yeah. yeah, so I go to this. So I move in. Beautiful neighborhood, as promised. Yeah. I cross the street, go into this diner. I pick up a new city, which was the paper that started my career later. And um, I'm a reporter. And on the cover, it said, Welcome to Boys Town. And I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting. So I open it up. First sentence. I live on the gayest street in America, the intersection of Hawthorne and uh, was it uh, Hawthorne and uh, Halstead yeah, in Halstead Chicago? Street. Halstead Street, yeah. And I was like, well, uh, "Wait a second. And I get up from my table. I look out at the intersection signs outside, and it says Hawthorne and Halstead. I'm like, oh, my freaking Lord. And so I call the lady up, and I said, "You didn't tell me this is like some gay neighborhood." And she's like, uh, you didn't know? And I go, come on. And she goes, wow, well, you signed the contract. Enjoy it. And I was like, oh, come on. So I was stuck for a year huh. in this studio apartment. In, in a this, really in, nice, safe, quiet neighborhood. Yes. You poor bastard. Was, exactly. I found it was, like, it was totally nice. I'm a slob. Nobody hit on me anyway. And, and there were tons of women around because they felt safe. So I actually managed to get some action anyway. But it was like, I, but I came to totally go, oh, everybody's cool. But exactly. here's the other funny thing. So when my brother came to visit um, a couple months in, I didn't realize that he had picked Pride Weekend to show up. It was by a coincidence. (laughs) So he was really buying the program. He's sort of autistic, and he buys whatever my parents tell him, right? Doesn't really think for himself that much. So... He, come, he shows up, and about two days before he's visiting, I notice all these rainbow flags everywhere, and all this stuff, pride, 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 and, like, spin at Belmont and Halstead yeah. was this giant, like, two-story gay dance club. They had a giant rainbow flag along the entire side wall of that building laid out. And I'm going, and I, uh, so I said to somebody, wait a minute, what's going on? They're like, it's Pride Weekend, Pride Parade. I'm like, no. And they're like, yeah. And so, but, so I was thinking, how do I hide this from my brother? I actually <laughs> mapped out a route through the neighborhood where I could hit all these little side streets and avoid all the main gay businesses like the Manhole and Gay Mart and things like that. But get this. We get, so I fool him for like two days. He doesn't catch on. But then finally, Saturday morning, okay, how's this for gay? 
he, I only had a futon, and I was having him sleep on the carpet on a sleeping bag, but he was uncomfortable, so he actually climbed in on the Friday night. He goes, I don't care. I'm getting in a futon with you. So we're sleeping like, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles only without where the hands wound up, but we're that tight, squeezed in together. Saturday at noon rolls around. All of a sudden, I hear, like, doosh, 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 like this electronic beats, yeah. and I'm like, oh, snap. And so I wake up, I look out the window, and there's some dude gyrating with bearless, assless bear chaps, <laughs> yeah. gyrating yeah. on a on a car, on top of a float, yeah. dire- parked directly below Jeez. my window. It's brunch, and I was Carl. like, no, it wasn't just brunch. We were the my intersection was the starting point, point. of gay pride parade, yeah, is, yeah. and so I'm like, uh, and my brother goes, what is that? I'm like, no, you can't look. And he's like, and so we're fighting each other at the blinds, like slapping each other. And, and so finally, he manages to look out the window and he goes, oh, and he goes, I'm telling, I'm telling, what are you doing? I'm telling. I, I just ruined the sound, sorry about that. <laughs> and, and so, so he's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Are you telling us something? And I'm like, no, no, no. And so I'm like, look, we'll get out of here. We'll get out of here, okay? Don't worry. So we try to go to the car, but there's 250,000 people lined up <laughs> on the parade route. Yeah. And my car's on the other side. So we wound up getting stuck in the crowd, even though we were yes. trying to escape to my car and get out of there. Yes. We got trapped for four hours watching all this stuff. I love it. And over the course of four hours, we wound up going, you know what? This is pretty funny. Let's just go. We had a fantastic <laughs> time. And after that, I was like, I was fully awoke. Do we, Sometime that, yeah. you should ask him about his story about moving to Watts when he moved to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to. Yes. Can, I, can I tell you a quick, my, yes, my health please, history? Please. Okay, we'll sure. keep this short. And then we'll so, cut it off. So, I'm, you know, so I'm, I'm finally starting to realize I'm in my early 20s. Um, I'm, I, I, I moved to Chicago to work for this tech company uh, and in Schaumburg, Illinois. And so, uh, uh, you know, I was like, okay, so I'm going to, you know, I'm, but I'm still very – Consumed with internalized homophobia, you know, I'm really yeah. scared to people to know that I'm gay. So, I saw an advertisement that you know, Gay Pride was coming up, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and see what that's all about. And you have to understand, you know, this is before you had like Instagram and all this other stuff. So, I thought Gay Pride, I thought gay people was the Blue Easter Club from <laughs> from Police Academy, where like a bunch of guys with beards and motorcycles. You know, I thought it was like that of bears, you know. And I was like, this is just horrible. If I'm gay, how am I going to be some of that? I like, because I'm totally not attracted to anything along that line. And um, so I, I parked my car like a mile away from Gay Pride the zone, so people wouldn't know. Like, like the secret people wouldn't see me going to Gay Pride. Sunglasses. Yeah, the whole nine yards, you know. <laughs> and and so I'm walking. I'm walking to Gay Pride, you know. And uh, and I, I'll never forget. So you were at the beginning. I was. I ended up coming at the end of Gay Pride. Mm-hmm. And I never forget. I started hearing the music. Oomph, 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 yeah. You know. And and I was like, okay. So this is like maybe it's like a, it's like a block. I feel like it'd be like a block party. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like the mummers. Oh, no. it's, like the it's, like the, it's, it's at, at the at the most mummers parade in Philadelphia. You know what I mean? And so I turned the corner, and literally there was this float that could be no less than like twenty foot tall. And basically, it was a it was like and twenty foot tall, twenty thirty foot tall but it was like maybe 40 foot long and it was just oh, basically no. this large white erect penis oh, with a saddle yeah. on it and this, guy, and this guy and this guy shirtless is swinging on it this, so this big penis <laughs> is swinging with this guy on top he's like Wah! that's awful <laughs> and I saw it was like this sea of gay people and I was like Okay. Uh, I'm home. <laughs> right. I'm like, this, is, this is not what I expected. You know, and so that was uh, that was my first experience of Chicago Gay Pride. And I, by the way, Chicago is a was that Chicago Gay Pride? I was, no, uh, this is the yeah. north side. No, this is yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chicago Gay Pride. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. So you host a tree, I don't right. think there is a South Chicago there is no, unfortunately. No, it's just very still ain't happening there. Black and homophobic. Um, all right. Well, hey, we're out of time. So um, where can people find out about you, Ron? And, um, uh, we'll also plug our own stuff. I really appreciate that. Let's see. I just launched a podcast called The Problem Solvers oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, with Mike Mortor. And uh, so basically we talk social commentary stuff. And then we ask somebody. Everyone has problems. And so we try and solve them from a serious and a comedic standpoint. Hmm. Um, it's a great thing. We've been interviewing people from like uh, professional gigolo, male gigolos who paid for their kids to go through college to sexual, so, uh, sexual assault survivors. Wow. Uh, to uh, you know, to women who you know, to single moms and also their good stuff. Uh, and then uh, I'm at Ice House um, on November fourth. Fourth, uh, I'm yeah. at the Comedy Store tomorrow night after your show here. Uh, your show tomorrow? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we have yeah, your yeah. show tomorrow. You are doing the pajama party at um, the Gaylord Lobby, uh, 3355 Wilshire. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I'm at, and then I'm at the com- and then I'm, I'm headlining the Cadillac show at uh, at the, the Comedy Store. 
Um, and um, you can you can find out more of what I'm doing on my website, Flipped Out Comedy. Dot com or Ron Bush Online. They all feed to the same site. Uh, me and one of Paul Mooney, the legendary Paul Mooney's great writer, is uh, Jeff Keller. Mm. Uh, we're finishing up writing a script called Ron Bush for President, which is a uh, is a web series that we're getting fund that's getting funded that basically takes on the political and social commentary of today. Um, in a very interesting web series, and we're going to start shooting that next month. So there's all that going on. Wow. Thank you for allowing me to plug, plug all that. Yeah, and, and um, I've been, oh, real quickly, yeah. and then I have. You just touch me. I'm in a movie. I'm in a movie, and it felt good too. You know, yeah. he, he got a little nervous because he hasn't. He it has, was he gentle. Flinched. He hasn't touched a man in a long he time. Flinched a little. Oh, I have. But, so anyway, go ahead. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, but bathroom stalls doesn't count. <laughs> and um, and uh, I have a movie coming out called Once Upon a Superhero. Uh, you can Google it. It comes out in about a, mm, two months or so. And I'm uh-huh. um, one of the lead characters in that, one wow, of the top four characters in that, yeah. Uh, Kevin, anything? Uh, you just missed me singing Free Fallen by Tom uh, Petty, the late, great Tom Petty. With the late, great Tom Petty, huh? Tom was it awful? I bet it was. Uh, I don't remember. But okay. uh, sure with Trey Cool from Green Day. You sure, knew that, uh-huh. you sure knew that a pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's my big... My big finale. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. How did you? Do we have enough time? How did you yeah. end up doing that? Not really. No, we don't do we it. Gotta wrap it up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just trying to take. We'll put some information there. about the next instant band night on our website. Yeah, there yeah, we go. do that. Yeah, sorry. And uh, Dave, anything? Okay, no. Can All we? Right. Uh, can we just thank Dave real quickly yeah, for being Dave. an amazing guy? Dave, you're amazing. He's thank the you best. Very much. He's the business Absolutely. folks. David Robinson, Absolutely. look him up if you need. After to uh, uh, after uh, after I sleep with uh, Kevin. <laughs> uh, and uh, don't forget me. Yeah, well, no, I've, you, I've, I've already, I've already, I've already had you. So get, okay. get in line. Yeah, after right <laughs> after that, you're yeah, exactly. Get in line. You're that. You know, that's a good sound man right there. Everybody's just waiting for. Him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then uh, I hope but, I disgusted some of you out there with that. I hope somebody cringed. <laughs> it was or, awful. Just, right, it was just awful. Yeah, I'm well, a, I'm a well, we're going to be giving nineteen dollars to what charity should we give? Uh, um, something gay related. The, to LGBT, the, L, the LGBTQ center. They're building. They're building uh, home. They're building housing uh, for homeless teens who've been thrown out of oh, their nice. homes. Where's that? Um, and it's in Hollywood. McCadden Place. Is yeah, that? Yeah, they're, 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 yeah, yeah Place is one of them, but uh, uh, I can't remember. But the main. The, the, yeah, yeah, Hollywood. Right. Yeah, and I can give you that information. We'll do it. Nineteen okay. bucks. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, Make yeah. it a difference. Don't spend it all one place. Absolutely. There's at least five condoms. Oh God! Okay, so don't, I guess that's don't, don't it. bring his name to this. <laughs> um, thanks. Until next time. I really uh, appreciate next it. Next week, Sam Absolutely. Tripoli is going to come in with another comic discussing. Oh no, no! Next week we have Chris Nichols, LA Magazine's deputy editor, uh, bringing in a LA history expert, and we're going to be talking about funny, awful moments in LA history. And then the week after, Sam Tripoli is coming in with conspiracy theories. And on the 18th, Dylan Brody, world famous storyteller. Uh, and uh, is going to be doing um, talking about rehab and sobriety along with a phone in from the real life pilot behind the flight. All right, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. You guys are amazing. <laughs>